Good morning and welcome to a new series in which we look at Gitano, which is a Git server um, that's written in Lua and has some interesting technologies behind it that I think you guys might be interested in. So first of all, we need to acquire all of the dependencies that Gitano depends on. And uh, the first dependency is actually stored in BZR. And if you don't have BZR, then I will try to find a git mirror of this and put a link in the description. But assuming you have BZR, then either use git BZR clone or BZR branch to acquire a copy of Luxio. Um, Luxio is the Lua Unix IO library written by Rob Kendrick and it is um, used by Gitano and its dependencies to gain access to things like executing programs and uh, finding you know uh, names of things and file access and so on. Um, with all of these things we can hit make and then we can hit sudo make install with a prefix of user local. Um, so that's installed Luxio for Lua 5.1. Obviously you're going to need a compiler and you're going to need the Lua 5.1 libraries in order to do that. Then we are going to clone uh, all of Gitano and its dependencies. Gitano's dependency list is a little long, but they're all available on the Gitano server. So there's Lace, Claude, Supple, Gaul, and Gitano itself. I'll talk about what each of those are in a moment. It's important when you clone these to clone dash dash recursive because they have submodules for various things. Uh, once they are all cloned, which just takes a moment or three, um, we can start to build these. The first and simplest one to build is uh, Lace. If you run make, it will run its test suite. Assuming all of its tests pass, then again, run make install with prefixes user local. Claude is also pretty easy. The same sequence of make and assuming they pass make install. Supple, again, make. Now Supple needs root in order to be able to do various tests. If you want to, you can do sudo make after you've run make and what that will do is it will run the test suite again but using root which just verifies that a few more things work properly. Then again, the install and we're done with supple. Gaul is slightly more complicated. Uh, Gaul is the library that Gitano uses for accessing Git. And um, in order to be efficient, Gaul will use libgit2 uh, in, in order to produce the functionality of Git in the Kitano processes themselves. In order to do this, we need to build libgit2 and libgit2, and Gaul's makefile will do this for you. Due to a limitation in my um, screen recording software, I can't just run make or the audio and the video are going to get out of sync. But what I can do is, first of all, build Gaul with uh, no output. This takes about 20 seconds. So while that's happening, I'm just going to recap the modules that we've built so far. Luxio, which is the Unix IO layer. Lace, which is an access control engine. Claude, which is a configuration system. Supple, which is a sandboxing system. And uh, we are now about to finish building Gaul, which is the Git access. So again, make will run the test suite. The Gaul test suite runs twice once with and once without libgit2 and as you can see it then outputs a message telling us how much of the test suite it managed to run without having to run external git processes. This gives us an idea of um, what efficiency savings we get by having libgit2 available to us. Uh, again the make install will pop that into user local for us. Finally we have Gitano now, Gitano, unlike all the others, doesn't have a direct unit test suite at this point. All make will do is prepare a local bin 
full of executables that we can use for testing Gitano locally. Um, we're not going to do that in this video, but in the next video we're going to be using these. So for now, just do the make install and you're done. Gitano needs a user in order to be able to run. Um, typically we call this user git. Now we need to create a user, which we're going to do with user add, minus M minus C, control git. I previously had a go at this, so the home directory already exists. There's no need to worry about that. And we're going to copy our SSH key and make sure that the other end can read it. Now we're going to become the git user and we're going to run Gitano setup. Gitano setup is going to configure this git user to be a Gitano server. So the first thing it asks for is the home directory, then it asks for the SSH directory. Next it wants a public key for the administration user. Because Gitano identifies people by their SSH keys, we then give it this public key that we copied in and it's going to use that to uh, identify ourselves as the administration user, the owner of this Gitano instance. It then asks us for a repository path, we can accept the default, a username for the administration user. Normally we would have uh, created SSH keys for Gitano and not put ourselves as the admin user but because I'm shortcutting at this point I'm uh, going to cheat. So the username for the administration user is me. My real name is that. My email address is that. The key name for the administrator, well, we can accept default. Gitano names keys. So if you have, for example, five different machines and they all have different SSH keys, you can name the different SSH keys and Gitano can uh, use that information when it uh, is making decisions. So for example, you could say, only when I'm at home am I an administrator, if you really wanted to. The site name is going to be uh, demonstration Gitano instance, and the log prefix will have demo. So Gitano has now set up uh, everything that it needs and if we ls we can see we have a repos directory which has a Gitano admin directory which is a bare git repository. We can also see that we now have a .ssh directory which has an authorized keys file and if we look at that file we can see that Gitano has set up an entry in there for the SSH key that we gave it. So let's leave this git user and let's do our first test which is simply to ssh git at localhost who am I. Um, if you've not ssh to your localhost before you'll have to accept the key and as you can see demo was that log prefix that we set and it has a username, a real name, an email address. It knows this ssh key is called default and it's the one that's currently in use and we're in the Gitano admin group. Gitano has set all of that up for us automatically. Uh, you can ask Gitano for help, whereupon it will output it, all of the commands that it understands. As you can see, it has a create command for making repositories. And um, for example, we can view readmes for repositories, we can rename repositories, we can do SSH key management. And because we are an administrator, if we say help admin, then we get the list of administrator commands such as user for administrate for managing users, group for managing groups, graveyard for managing where Kitano will put repositories that are destroyed. It's an important thing to note that destroying a repository does not actually destroy it. It simply puts it in the graveyard. And the reason for this is because most other actions are undoable. So we wanted to make it possible to undo the destruction of a repository and as is equivalent to sudo for Gitano. It allows you to run a command as another user, but you need to be an administrator in order to achieve that.
very simply let's create a repository and do something with it just to prove that we can so let's ssh git at localhost create um, let's say we're going to have a fork of Gitano itself it's been created you can see that uh, Gitano has set the ownership to me um, that it's it configured all of the hooks for the repository and it's reminded us that if we want to do anything special with this we're going to have to configure rules but let's first of all just go back into the checkout of Gitano that we had and let's add a local um, remote, local remote, oh dear, uh, git at localhost slash gitano dot git. The dot git is optional, gitano will accept things with and without and will do the right thing. git push local head. And we've written to our local repository. If we go back to the git user and have a look, then you can see that we have a master branch and git log will show us that we do have stuff in there. So that's the first stage. Now Gitano keeps all of the configuration for a repository in another ref uh, and also it keeps all of the configuration for the uh, Gitano instance in a Gitano repository which you saw which is called Gitano admin. We'll be looking at the Gitano admin repository and the Gitano admin refs in the other repositories next time. I hope that helped. Bye for now.